Hi, my name is Melissa Krieger with Do Yoga With Me. This is a short routine focusing on balance. You'll need a block for this practice. There'll be a short Shavasana at the end, but you're welcome to stay and make it longer if you'd like. Enjoy. We'll start today's practice lying on our backs in constructive rest pose. So with your feet flat and your knees bent, Tuck in the chin a little bit so the back of the neck is long. You can rest your arms however they're comfortable. The knees could knock in towards each other if that feels comfortable for you. Start to settle in. Begin to pay attention to your breath. As you're easing into the breath, see what's going on in the rest of the body. Find some softness around the forehead and the eyes, the jaw, your neck and your shoulders, your elbows, relax your hands, your fingers, around your belly, your low back, your pelvis, your knees, your feet. Begin to deepen your exhale. So starting to blow that exhale all the way out. It gets stronger and sharper. Remember, as I've mentioned before, this complete exhale Blowing your breath all the way out to the bottom helps you to connect into your deep abdominals and your pelvic floor muscles. And this is a reflex that we all have. We really wanna use it in our practices, particularly in a balanced practice. Along with that extended exhale, see if you can pull up on your pelvic floor, the muscles at the base of the pelvis, and back at your low belly, so a couple inches below your belly button. So that means we're using the exhale to find all that strength and power. Exhaling all the way out, pulling back on the low belly, pulling up on your pelvic floor. On the inhale, focusing on getting a nice long breath in, letting everything soften a little, and then exhaling to reconnect. It's hard. It's hard to connect into these deep core muscles, especially if you're not used to doing it. So try your best, and we will always practice this when we practice together. And keep working that extended exhale because that will help to kick into those muscles too. Do that a couple more times, please. Take a big stretch. Stretch out through your arms, stretch out through your legs. That might turn into a big yawn. Take a little lean over to one side. You can walk your torso, walk your legs, stretch out through your fingers and your toes. And then try the other side, reach out, stretch and breathe. And come on back through to center. Take a big exhale, wake up your core, draw your knees in towards your chest. Hold on where you like. Stay still or move a little bit. Still working those big inhales and those extended exhales. And circle the knees a few times. And do that in both directions. When we do balance work, I usually like to wake up the abdominals a little bit. So let's try some of that. Big exhale, wake up your core, 
Draw back on your low belly, pull up on your pelvic floor. Stretch your arms and your legs up towards the ceiling. Turn your palms in towards each other. The elbows and the knees can be a bit relaxed. There's already some work in the abdominals here. You don't have to do anything else. Or you could start to bring your brain into it a little bit more. Just opposite arm, opposite leg. It's called a dead bug. Let one leg stretch a little forward. Let the opposite arm stretch back. That might be the inhale. Strong, sharp exhale. Come back in. So you're alternating from side to side. You don't have to go very far with the legs. You might notice that I'm maybe going halfway down, maybe not even that far. My leg's not going anywhere near the floor. I'm thinking more about trying to keep my torso still and stable. There should be no pain in the low back. There will be a little bit of heat in your belly. There can feel like a little bit of work, but if it starts to become uncomfortable in your low back, please stop doing the exercise. Go for a couple more reps. I'm just trying to wake up the abdominals a bit, bring them into play. Keep trying to use that strong, sharp exhale. Keep drawing back at your low belly, pulling up at your pelvic floor. The next time your arms and legs are up, circle at your wrists and your ankles a little bit. They might be creaky, that's very normal. Bring your feet down to the mat. Take your feet as wide as the mat so the knees are bent. Bend your arms, grab your elbows, coming into a twist. Elbows go one way, knees go the other way. So even though we're focusing more on your balance today, we will still be moving all the different ways that you can. We're twisting, we'll be side stretching, uh, folding forward, extending backwards. Eventually roll over to one side. And then come on up into all fours. Wrists underneath the shoulders, fingers spread wide. Move into your cat cow curls. Belly can fall forward. Inhale, look a little forward. Exhale, drop your head, push your mid back up. Just finding the rhythm of your movement here. Trying to link up your breath and your movement. Adding a little bit more movement here. Take an inhale. Exhale, push back towards child's pose. Your forehead might not touch the floor. Stretch the arms a little bit more forward. Inhale to pull up towards all fours. Exhale back to child's pose. Inhale up to all fours. This is enough. Or you could add a little bit more movement in your spine. So when you come up, you could arch your back, look a little forward. You could drop it around, push to child's pose. Up to all fours, arch, round and push back. This is still enough. You don't have to add anything else. You could add a little bit more movement through your hips, adding a circle. So you could come up and circle to the side and the front, and the side and the back. And you can play around with the knees, whether they're closer together or further apart. Just trying to move our spine in a few different ways. And then go the other way. So all this movement is really important, right? We want our spine to be hydrated and flexible. We also need some stability and some strength. Pull back into all fours, have the wrists underneath the shoulders, fingers spread wide, knees underneath your hips. That same opposite arm, opposite leg movement from before will play with in a slightly different way. Stretch one leg back behind you and land on your toes. Stretch the other arm forward, land on your fingers. So sorry, this should be opposite arm and leg. It will feel tricky to balance, but easier than if you ended up on the same side. Looking down towards the ground, take a big exhale, suck back on the low belly, pull up on your pelvic floor, and then a few times lift that opposite arm and opposite leg. Much like that dead bug, trying to keep the torso quite still and squeezing your backside as you lift that leg. Go for one more. Bring that hand and that knee back in. Stretch your opposite leg behind you. 
reach the other fingers forward and land on your fingers. This is enough and this is a balance and you could stay just like this or big exhale, wake up your core and lift that opposite arm, opposite leg, please. Last one. Pull everything back in again. And then head back towards child's pose so the big toes might come closer together, the knees go further apart. The forehead can come down to the mat or your hands. Take a few breaths and rest. You can continue to stay down in child's pose. You can make your way back up to all fours and move a little bit more, or you can come up towards downward dog. If you're heading to downward dog, hands can go a little wider. Pinky fingers might touch the sides of the mat, toes tuck under. Lift up the knees, push the hips up and back. Remember the heels don't need to touch the floor, the knees don't need to be straight. But I do want you to let your head relax down, your neck can relax. You could stay still or you could Walk your dog, that's where you bend one knee at a time. So the other heel pushes a little closer to the floor. When you're ready from wherever you're coming from, make your way up towards a standing forward fold, please. So just getting your feet underneath you Bring your hands towards your shins. Come up about halfway flat in your back. Inhale, exhale and fold back down again. Remember, you can be very generous with the bend in the knees. Whatever you need to do to let your spine relax and your head hang down. Your arms can do anything. They don't have to touch the floor. They could rest on your legs or hold your elbows. You could stay still or there could be a little bit of a sway from side to side. Bring your hands to your shins, come up halfway, flat back, inhale. Notice your legs extend and straighten here too. Exhale and fold back down. And then roll yourself up. Maybe your hands come onto your legs for support. Your head can come up last. Once you get to the top, you might roll the shoulders back a few times or circle the arms back. So we're focusing mostly on balancing on your feet and on your hands and your knees. With your feet, when we're doing these balances, you do need to consider your feet and the space that they're taking up. I think about it as like real estate. You want to take up as much real estate as possible on the floor. So spreading the toes wide, trying to relax the feet as best as you can and really dropping your weight down. It's always good to experiment with weight shifting because that's a huge part of our balance. So shifting your weight over towards one foot, doesn't matter what foot and then drive that foot down to the floor. Maybe the other heel can lift, maybe the other foot can lift. So just shifting from side to side, playing around with that. And of course, using that strong, sharp exhale, blowing the breath all the way out, plus trying to draw back on your low belly and pull up on your pelvic floor as you can. So this is a really great balance to play with, and you can always default to this if the balances I show later on in the practice are too much. Another way is to pause. So you're still breathing, you're holding the shape but not your breath. So just increasing that strength and stability through your body. Playing a little bit more with that, you'll be grabbing your block. You could also use a water bottle for this, it doesn't really matter. It is a bit harder to balance on a yoga mat than being on a flatter surface. You also may be on a carpet, so that makes a difference too. But if it feels helpful, feel free to step off and come onto a flatter surface with your water bottle or your block. Shift your weight over towards one foot. Really drive that foot into the floor. Pick the other foot up. Take your block and put it down on the ground and then stand back up again. Lean forward again, grab the block. Stand back up, switch legs. Big exhale, wake up your core, just to make sure you're still breathing, start your balance. Tip forward, drop the block down, stand back up. Come forward again, grab your block. 
come back up. We'll do that a couple more times. So shifting over to the other foot, lowering down. It doesn't matter whether your leg is more straight or more bent, you decide what feels more stable. Something that you could play with is trying to grab the block with the other hand. So you drop it off with one hand and then maybe you grab it with the other hand, a little bit of a brain exercise and then go for another one on each side, please. So when you start to make the balance more dynamic, when there's movement, it's harder for sure. So I am making the exercises progressive and harder each time, but remember you can always go back. You can go back to that weight shift if that makes more sense. Balance is hard, but it's also meant to be kind of fun. <laughs> you need to be able to breathe. It shouldn't be super stressful. Balance is hard for everybody, and particularly when we're balancing in our bare feet, like this is, the stakes are a bit, not higher, but it's harder, so be nice to yourself. Moving into a bit of a flow, have some space in between your feet. You might bring your hands to your hips or to your waist. Shift your weight over towards your right foot. Bring the left knee up, take a round of breath, just pause. So sneaky little balance. Take a step back with that foot. The toes are turned out just a little bit, so we're moving in towards warrior one. The hips are more squared towards the top of the mat, and right away, to give yourself a little bit more support, you can move your front foot over towards its own side, and then you'll see there's a little bit of a gap in between your heels, so you're more like hip distance apart rather than on a tightrope or crossed over. This gives you more stability. Bend into just the front knee, stretch your arms up towards the ceiling. So trying to keep that back heel rooted down. The elbows can be as bent as they need to be. Take a couple rounds of breath. So not a balance per se, but there can be some elements of balance here for sure. This definitely is a balance. Moving into warrior three. So bring the hands down, again, maybe to the hips or to the waist. Big exhale, wake up your core. Start to shift your weight towards your front foot. Slide the back foot in and your toes could stay on the floor. This is a balance and you don't have to do anything else. Or you might flex that foot a little bit more and start to tip forward. The knee can be a little soft if that makes it easier to stay stable. Trying to keep the hips squared down to the ground. Your hands could stay where they were or whatever supportive for your balance. Maybe they stretch out, maybe they stretch forward or back. But make sure you're breathing. That gets a little lost when we're trying to balance. Shifting back into that warrior one again. So placing that back foot down carefully with the toes turned out slightly. Bend back into your front knee. Stretch your arms up. Take a round of breath. Nice and calm and cool. Bring your hands down again. Sometimes it's just easier when your arms are a bit more contained. So maybe back down to your waist again, shifting weight in towards your front foot, bend your back knee, lift it up, round of breath. And put that foot down. Give it a bit of a shake out. Shake out your arms, shake out your legs. Try on the other side. So start with a little bit of space in between your feet because that'll help you maintain that space, that space. The hands can come towards your hips. Big exhale, wake up your core. Shift your weight towards that left foot. Bring up your right knee, round a breath. Big step back behind you. Remember, we wanna have that little bit of space in between the feet still. So you might just check that that's happening. Bend into your front knee and stretch your arms up. Even here, like you can explore what feels more stable. Where do you want to look? Down, forward, up. Closing your eyes, of course, really changes things. I wouldn't suggest closing your eyes as we transition into that warrior three pose, but just to feel that it really does make a difference in all of the poses, not just the ones I'm showing you today. You could keep your arms up as we lean forward into warrior three, or you could bring them back down like I am, your choice. Start to straighten that front leg, slide the back foot in, land on your toes, <laughs> take a big exhale, wake up your core. That foot can be a little bit flexed just so it feels more active and then tip forward. Whatever you wanna do with your arms. You can feel how your foot that you're balancing on, how it kinda wants to tense up a little bit. Try to keep relaxing, keep finding space. One more breath.
Step back into warrior one. Then back into the front knee. Stretch your arms up. Breathe. This time, you might try keeping your arms up or you can bring them down, shifting weight in towards that front foot, lifting that back knee up. Take a round of breath. Bring everything down. Again, you might want to give it a little bit of a shake out. From the top of the mat, have a little bit of space in between your feet. Bring your hands to prayer position. Breathe in. Exhale, drop your hands. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, dive down. Come halfway up for a flat back. Exhale and fold, bend the knees enough to get your hands to the floor, and then just head right back to downward dog. You can always bypass downward dog and go straight down to child's pose if that feels like a better place for you to be. Take a couple breaths. Make your way towards all fours, and then come right into a comfortable seated position. If you've got something to sit on, you might use that. These balancing classes could be hours long. There's so many balances that I could choose from. I'm just choosing some of the more kind of basic balances that I think are important. And seeing that those come up a lot in yoga practices, the the opposite arm and leg ones, the all fours one, and the standing ones seem to be a little bit more commonplace and easier to learn and lots of little tips to help you get more comfortable balancing. And then there's a whole world that you can explore. Bring one hand down to the floor, lean a little bit over to the side, let the other arm stretch up and over. So considering that I still want your body to move all the different ways that it can, I want the practice to feel like a complete practice. So getting in here, a side stretch, then a twist. Round of breath. And then come on back up again. Keep this arm up. Big exhale, wake up your core. Twist over towards the side. Let that arm come across the leg. The hand can be palm up or down. The other hand, the fingertips can come back behind you. Sit up a little bit taller. Open your chest to the long side of the mat. Maybe look over your back shoulder. Release the twist. If you're in a comfortable position or it's symmetrical, you might stay where you are. If you're in a cross-legged position or something asymmetrical, you might switch sides. Inhale to stretch the other arm up. Exhale, take a lean over to the side. Of course, there's a whole world of arm balances, right? Which I generally don't teach because I don't practice them, but there's lots of other great teachers on the site that can show you lots of funky upside down arm poses. You can practice with Tracy, Krista, Fiji. They will get you moving in lots of wild ways. Take one more round of breath. Come on back up again. Keeping this length in the body, take an exhale and twist. Hand placement, however it makes sense. Get that height. Open the chest a little bit more. Look over your back shoulder. And then go ahead and untwist. Come off of that support if you've got some and make your way onto your back. Have your feet flat and your knees bent and your feet close together and close in towards you. So I would consider 
Bridges could even be a little bit of a balance, particularly this version that we'll play around with. Bring your arms down beside you, have your palms face down. Big exhale, wake up your core. Push your feet down, lift your hips up to bridge. And lowering back down again. So a few repetitions, lifting and lowering. Feeling that connection with your feet pushing down into the ground, your toes pushing down into the ground. So you've got lots of stability. That theme kept on coming up. Whatever's pushing down into the ground really needs to push, really needs to be there to stabilize you. So even the back of my arms are working right now, along with my feet. The next time you're up, stay up. Shift your weight over towards one foot. It doesn't matter which foot. Maybe that other foot, maybe it can lift up. Maybe the heel can lift up. Maybe the foot can hover. Can you do that and still keep the other hip stable? Lower back down again. Push the weight down into the floor. Wake up your backside. Big exhale, engage your core. What about the other leg? So much like some of the exercises, keep going here, shifting from side to side, that we played around with those supermans, those dead bugs. Can you keep your torso fairly stable even while you're moving other parts of your body? So that's really core stability. How can you stay stable through your core, through your midsection, and move around? It's hard. So a little bit of a balance, right? And you can feel how balance, strength is so involved in balance too. They go hand in hand. Might go for one more on each side if you're still with me, still up for it. And if this is new and it feels really intense, it is, it's hard. <laughs> Practice, it'll get easier. Lower back down again when that's done. Take the feet a bit wider. Take a few of those windshield wiper legs, please. Bring your legs back through to center. Walk a little closer together. Pick up one foot, cross your ankle over your thigh so your knee's pushing away from you. So the basic stretch for your backside, it'll feel good after all these balances. The back foot can stay down or hop in a little bit closer. The leg could be up and hovering or you could reach all the way through. Remember to keep the chin a little bit tucked in, shoulders relaxed. And cross your legs. Try the other side. This side might be different with where that back foot is. Even though there might be lots of sensation through the hips, can the rest of the body be pretty relaxed? Can the breath stay steady? Bring that back foot down to the ground and cross your legs. Settling into Shavasana, your legs can be bent or straight. You can rest your arms however you like. Here you can let the core go, let the breath just do its normal thing. Take a little bit of time to relax.
If you'd like to stay longer in Shavasana, please do. Just ignore me. If you're ready to start to move, you can wiggle your fingers and your toes. You might nod the head from side to side. Go for a stretch, a yawn. Bend your knees. Roll to your side. You can pause. You can run up to a comfortable seated position. Bring the hands together for prayer. Close your eyes. Notice how you feel. Thank yourself for practicing. Thank your body for all its hard work. Open your eyes. Lift your gaze. Thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.